Amberly, I, I guess I am trying to wrap my mind around everything that we've been talking about tonight and get some kind of sense of how how widespread this problem is. I mean, can you, I, I don't know if you have actual numbers, but can you quantify the, the impact that this is having on, uh, on sex workers writ large? So the average sex worker makes uh, about $2,000 a month. And again, that's from people comparing like Lena the plug who makes and um, Bella Thorne. I'm lumping her in there too. yeah i was gonna say are we calling her a sex worker i would, um, would would other sex workers invite her to a sex worker party i mean she's been she's been she's been to plenty of sex worker parties i'm only putting her in there because she's made erotic films even though she wasn't in them and she oh i'm gonna throw her in there um <laughs> um but like madeline uh madeline i think it's madeline maitland maitland ward Maitland Ward, Lena the Plug, if you don't want to put in Bella, that's fine. Um, but like those that make millions compared to those who are making fifty, a hundred dollars a month. Like, so the average is two thousand. So, and then on average, from what I've been doing, because anytime I find a sex worker, be you like me or hate me, love me, whatever, if I find a if I find a sex worker, I have a list that then checks on them daily um, to see if they still have an account. And um, I, I keep those numbers just for myself so I can like see if like a huge dip happened. Why was there a term of service change? Sure. Um, what is going on? And so there, there are kind of some some epochs, like some nexus events that shut down large numbers of accounts all at once. Yes. Yes. In fact, I think um, the, the infamous graph that you found all over the place uh it came from one of those situations where people were like oh yeah twitter's not doing anything i'm like okay but how come this happened um explain that to me um anywho uh but yeah so if everyone's making well, not everyone if the average person's making two thousand and on a average month there's close to about five thousand sex worker accounts that are deleted from if we're going across all social. So I track Instagram, TikTok, uh, and Twitter. I stopped tracking Facebook because Facebook's very, I think you want, you can agree with me. They're very persnickety on what we're allowed to post. For sure. Like, yeah. They're, they're more suppression heavy than most. I don't track YouTube because YouTube doesn't want that type of content on there. Um, and I don't track adult sites because they're adult sites. Like if you got kicked off there, it's usually it's very rare not an unreasonable thing presumably yeah so those are the the three that i mainly track so if everyone's not everyone if the average person's making two thousand we're losing five thousand accounts a month and again some of those are multiple the same person losing their account over and over again sure um then that means that you're losing access to all of your fans and a lot of their models 90% of their traffic comes from social media. I'm not going to say you're going to lose all $2,000, but I'm willing to be very generous and say half. So if $1,000 is being lost per account per user for 5,000 sex workers a month, then there you go. Like that, that is about the amount that we're looking at sex workers losing um, month to month to month to month. And that's a lot of money. And honestly, there are, again, there's other industries that are targeted, but we don't see it happening because for example, if I work in another industry, that's not as it's not the adult industry, I can still have a MailChimp mailing list and just message out to everybody on MailChimp, find me over here. Um, if I work in, if I, which if, works if, if you have like a really dedicated fan, but yeah. you know, when I follow somebody randomly on Instagram, perhaps I'm interested in spending money and purchasing their content, but I don't know if I'm signing up for their mailing list. If I do sign up, I don't know that I'm actually reading their email. If I do read their email, I don't know if I'm actually being fucking bothered to go and follow on another platform. I mean, I got to open another window. Like exactly. I don't think people are using social media that way. Exactly. So like you're really costing, you're costing these um, sites um, for clips, clips for sale actually got shut down clips for sale. Like the major platform lost their Twitter account. 
how many people were making sales because what uh, in, uh, what closer sale would do is tweet out anytime that you posted a new video and they had millions of followers that impacts sex workers as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of how I quantify that 5,000 um, models losing. And I have dysgraphia, so don't make me do this math in my head. Um, <laughs> but um, I really do like not kidding. I do have dysgraphia, um, which is weird because I really like algorithms. It's I live a difficult life. <laughs> <laughs> you're like the you're like a sex archaeologist. I kind of. I'm turning into, I keep joking and saying I'm turning into a historian. You're like the <laughs> Indiana Jones of the, of the sex worker industry. I mean, Tell they already have a whip. The great Tumblr extinction event, Amber Lee. <laughs> 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 I can actually tell you the history. I kind of am a historian. Like I can tell you the history of almost every major platform and every major milestone that they've done and what it's ended up in, what which group it ended up impacting. I am a that of useless social media inf information. <laughs> but going back to the numbers, 5,000 accounts shut down on average. Um, and again, I'm rounding for pretty reasons because I don't feel like doing massive math right now. Sure. And again, being conservative and halving how much these sex workers make. Um, so we're, we're saying a thousand dollars comes from people who follow them on Twitter, but haven't like, they're not going to go check mini vids every day to see if there's a new video drop to go see it. That means $5 million is being taken away from independent creators a month and really that's just I, I mean I do follow the brands but for for um uh, for this specific number I'm not putting in stuff like clips for sale I'm not uh, not when fan intro lost their Twitter account stuff like that strictly hmm. individual content creators five million dollars is being taken from us when we have to restart over again and it's taxing and it's tiring. And I like to tell people while 5 million is a huge number, how many of those models quit and never came back? Yeah, They actually had, I, I can't tell you, I've had a lot of models come to me and say, um, actually, I, I'll put a name. I'll put a name to it because she's very public about it. Noah Benzi uh, is really public about how she built up a Twitter with 300,000 plus followers. And then when she lost it, she lost brand deals. So she wasn't um, able to make money off of that. People weren't going, when she made her new Twitter, people that were transactional, I don't want to say they're transactional friends. They weren't friends. They were business associates. Sure. They weren't going to push her because she no longer had a platform to push them. So she lost that. She had to rebuild and it was really difficult for her. So, hi. Yeah. Now well, that I, I mean, depressed that... everyone. Yeah, no, it, it begs the question, like, is there, is, is it worth it? to try and appeal i mean is there is there any form of redress and is it uh is it sincere you know like if you go through the effort you go through the motions and you are not some you know giant corporation but you are a uh, a sex worker working for themselves your account gets shut down what do you do is it worth it to do anything pick me i know the answer um <laughs> Um, so let's use another really popular example. Everyone knows Chris Crocker. Uh, for those who may not know Chris Crocker, the uh, Leave Britney Alone person, though they don't want to be known as that anymore. But I only pointed that out in case somebody for cultural reference would remember them that way. So uh, Chris Crocker lost their verified Twitter account. Uh, granted, it wasn't due to uh, sex worker suppression, but if it's this hard for someone with a verified account that is this culturally relevant um, to get their account back, imagine being a no-name person. So Chris Crocker lost their um, their Twitter account due to um, a licensing issue. Doesn't matter in this specific thing, but didn't have one for months while they went through appeals and it took other people that know people that work at Twitter to really kind of jump in and be able to go get an answer as to why they even lost their account. Like what was the actual tweet? What really caused this? Because you can lose your account for stuff you posted five years ago. I'm not kidding. Delete all of your old posts. 
like now. I, I try not to keep anything that's been up there for more than three years for this reason. Wow. Um, it's definitely something to do. There's mass wiping tools too, and most of them are free. Highly suggest them once mm -hmm. a year. Just old stuff. Yeah, but, well, I mean, that that's one important tip. Do you have other advice uh, for how people can avoid, you know, being caught in the crosshairs or, or being okay. singled out on these things? Yeah, when it comes to shadow bans, absolutely avoid anything that's automated. Again, you can use schedulers like TweetDeck, Hootsuite, but it needs to be your organic words. Um, avoid, avoid words that you know are most likely going to get you blasted, like everything that we've mentioned here today don't say um <laughs> <laughs> so like hypothetically speaking yeah. if a sexual education youtube channel wanted to do an episode about shadow banning on youtube you'd probably recommend against that right honestly no because youtube is hasn't really smacked nerd city but make sure you're not using inflammatory language. Um, I try to keep my cursing to a minimum. I curse like a sailor. I've legitimately had people meet me in real life at conventions and they're like, wow, you're not the same person. I'm like, you can't be. Um, okay. <laughs> um, try not to use inflammatory language. Don't get into fights. Like it is so easy, especially if you make fringe content. Not like, you don't even have to be a adult actor but if you make any kind of fringy content um uh 420 um type content anything sex educational don't get into fights with people on twitter or, or on any social media don't fight with people period ever um make sure that um if you're a bigger person i hate to say this you have to cover up more i'm not for it i love tank tops but I don't wear tank tops typically when it comes to social media because it's going to read more skin. It's going to ban me. Um, other things that you can do is really go out and talk, like post comments on other people's stuff because that helps the algorithm be happy with you because mm. it's like, oh, you're doing more organic things. So like even if you're on YouTube, go to other channels like um, you do sexual, uh, you know, we talk about sexuality on this. Go to Sunny Megatron's American Sex Podcast. Leave some comments there. Stuff like that. Um, I like to tell people that you really want to do the things that the social media sites want you to do. They want you to spend more time on their app. They want you to interact with other people. They want you to not pump and dump, which is just post stuff and leave the app immediately. Mm. Doing small things like that can overcome. Because um, to explain shadow banning and suppression, it's an algorithm, but algorithms are nothing but point systems. So if I'm stacking up over here doing a bunch of things like posting links to sites that would be not advertiser friendly, um, I'm talking about non advertiser friendly stuff, but I'm spending a lot of time on the site. I'm talking a lot on the site. I'm interacting with a lot of people on the site. You can actually get more good points than bad points, which can help you overcome and kind of jump over the hurdle of a shadow ban. That was long. I'm sorry. No, it, I mean, it feels exhausting, you know, like uh, I My thoughts. Exactly. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I, I came up in the restaurant industry and I was always amazed to recognize the difference between people who knew how to cook really, really well versus people who knew how to run a successful business. And that's definitely a meaningful distinction. But it is just heartbreaking to recognize that in order to be a successful uh, porn actress, for instance, that you have to also be not just business savvy, not just clever in your marketing, but also willing to build a bunch of fucking robot Twitter accounts. I mean, the, the level of complexity here and the hoops that we are asking people to jump through to sell a product that people want to buy that is legal to possess that is healthy and normal for you to have is just aggravating to me it, it is um and like for example to show the hypocrisy and the algorithms with when it comes to suppression shadow banning um Sarah J, because i'm just going to use every porn star name to ensure this episode cannot be monetized <laughs> Um, sure. 
Sarah J um, pointed out to me on Instagram how she has fan accounts. Now she has a verified account, millions of followers. She has fan accounts that if you search on, I'm actually looking up on my phone right now. But if you search do on it. Instagram, I'm gonna do it. Um, <laughs> just do it. Um, I'm gonna look it up. But if you type in Sarah J, um, and this might not be true of me right now because I follow her on Instagram, but her fan accounts will show up higher than her. Sometimes mm-hmm. she won't show up at all, but her fan accounts that are legitimately just taking her content. Um, but yeah, official Sarah J fan club. These fan club accounts have a hundred thousand followers and they're just reposting her content. They can post content onto those pages that if she posts onto her pages will be deleted. Mm-hmm. The exact same pictures that she posted and got, I would so turn my phone to to the camera right now, but I can't show this on YouTube. Um, (laughs) On the fan page, like full butt, just full butt undies pulled down and this fan page is up, but we can't post that. So there's absolutely, um, when Instagram said anecdotal, no, it's not anecdotal. Um, Like there's hundreds of examples like that. And it, it does get frustrating. It is exhausting um and it's part of the reason why i made it my mission to fully understand this stuff because there has to be rhyme or reason behind it um because a human made the system so a human can figure out the system fair to say sorry that was a long rant too no i mean this is uh this is kind of what we're here to do at this stage uh now that we understand the problem i think uh shaking your fist at at clouds makes a little bit of sense because this is just a an aggravating issue without a whole lot of solution in sight uh so with with that in mind uh Amberly, i, I want to check if there were any like resources or supports or or anything else you might want to mention for uh, performers and and other sex workers and and folks who are just looking to navigate these tricky waters? Yeah, there's there's quite a few. There's more and more um, coaches popping up. Um, I know Braddy Bella, who is a massive OnlyFans like um, uh, creator. I absolutely love her. Um, just started coaching, helping models learn how to figure out OnlyFans and also how to navigate around social media. Um, and a shameless plug, my book, Digital Psychology, is dropping on the 15th of August, which goes through my process step by step of how I figure out an algorithm on any platform so that I can make content get to the top, get where I want to be seen and build myself, but also back up my audience in case I, for what, in in case the algorithm changes at some point, but also how to figure out how the content changes. So, um, and I also have a lot of free classes. I have a class on Crowdcast about how to, uh, and it's free, um, how to get unshadow banned if you do suspect you are shadow banned and also how to detect if you're on your way to being shadow banned, so. Shameless bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and and we'll have uh, links to all of that good content uh, in the notes for this episode. Outside of that, what should the rest of us be doing to be part of the solution here? If you want to be a part of the solution, and that's like where the biggest amount of people, because not all of us are content creators, if you want suppression to stop, um, do things like, for example, YouTube just rolled out saying that you can um, fan fund on YouTube, even if you aren't in the monetization program. So if you're not getting, you can't have ad, get paid off ads, your fans can still like donate and stuff. Super chat, not, not, I'm not like trying to solicit them from sexual sexuality right now, but <laughs> super chat people that have, that are marginalized on YouTube. When uh, super follows come out on Twitter, subscribe to those creators show these companies that there is money in the places that they tend to ignore because they don't think there's that much money but also get loud like uh most of these not most all social media sites have a legal team and if you send complaints to them they take them very very seriously versus if you just send in a tip or a hint or whatever it just goes Mm -hmm. to a box that they ignore um, yeah, hit up the legal team and say that, you know, this is discrimination. You guys need to do something about it. If enough people cry about it, no, I, I want to say cry, but enough people decry, decry yeah. discrimination, 
um, then the attorneys will be the ones that go to the policy interview teams and say, hey, before mm. this turns into a class action lawsuit, maybe you guys should look into this. Could I could I pop in here with a quick question for you, mm -hmm. Amber Lee? I've heard uh, other guests on secular sexuality, um, like Rudy B, for example, who has said, and, and I love them, they're great. But uh, I've heard them say that OnlyFans and sites like that are really, really clunky. They're they're not user friendly. They're poorly designed. Like, what are the obstacles um, to something like a sex workers co-op or something that's by us for us? Is there anything <sighs> like that out there? Is there's been a, there's been many attempts. Um, and Lord knows I've, I've gotten behind many of those attempts. The problem is in the adult industry, none of us want each other to know each other's names for obvious reasons, like real names. Um, right. So it, a lot of the sex workers don't trust something that's, I, I've even had people say that they, uh, like if a company hires a sex worker, like one of the adult companies hire one of us to come on and do consulting. I've seen some models say, I don't want to work with that company now for the off chance that that sex worker now has access to my name. Um, so that is one of the obstacles. The other obstacle is money. Making these platforms costs so much money, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars. I will say out of all the sites out there, OnlyFans is pretty user friendly. Um, it's that a lot of people that join, like a lot of people, their first foray into owning a business um, or running their own business is sex work that will that come into sex work. I should say, this is their first right. time actually being in a dashboard where you have to upload and there's laws, there's separate laws to creating content here versus for YouTube. Um, I have to have contracts and locational contracts and all this other stuff. So it becomes overwhelming for a lot of people. Um, which is another thing. That's what also what makes this cost hundreds of thousands of dollars is you have to have an attorney check over this stuff. So I'm all for sex workers uniting and creating something that's for us and by us. But at the same time, there's so many like there there's so many obstacles behind it that I don't see it getting off the ground in the next you, year or two, if that makes sense. You, you kind of need to be established to get established. Is that what I'm hearing? It's a, it's, it's a, it's a furious catch 22. It costs, <laughs> Sounds so, like it. it costs so much money. Like the platform that I'm working on with adult empire, hundreds of thousands of dollars went into it and into creating it. And the average sex worker doesn't have that. And I mean, we're all kind of distrusting of kick Kickstarter is not exactly going to let us sure. start crowdfunding yeah. over there. Um, so yeah, that's just, it's, I would love to, do I want to see it happen? Would I do anything? What I, what I hope try to make it happen as I can? Yes. But a lot of times that stuff like that fizzles out very quickly, mm -hmm. sadly. Yeah, no, it it uh, it takes money to make money. And when you have so many extra barriers and burdens on the work that you're doing, it takes that much more. Uh, it's uh, it's very frustrating. A hundred percent. And like, I'm not, I don't want to say that there's like a stereotypical type of person who gets into sex work, but a lot of sex workers, this wasn't like something that they plan to do since childhood if that makes any sense sure yeah and so um a lot of them are coming here because it is a side hustle and whatnot so we're kind of dependent upon the platforms that are there but honestly we have good platforms like um clips for sale is a great platform i want clips is a wonderful platform um we have we have many different options already it's more legislation that is kicking our butts right now mm -hmm. um and it's more mainstream platforms because again like r really when you think mainstream porn platforms only two names come to mind Pornhub sure. and only fans um so yeah <laughs> we need to get more of those platforms into the public sphere so that then we don't have to rely on a twitter or an instagram yeah 
Well, and, and the truth is, uh, people are using these platforms. They are just not talking about these platforms. I, I have to stress again that if nobody was buying this content, these issues would dry up and this conversation wouldn't be important. But the reality is people want this content. People are allowed to have this content. Other people want to sell this content and people are allowed to sell this content. Why is there so much bullshit in between? Uh, I know that we're we're not going to solve this issue today or tomorrow, but it is uh, it is exciting to have y'all's support in in working through all this and to have everybody watching today. I, I guess I would say uh, vote, participate in the economics of porn, like pay for your content and be part of the solution here. Yeah. Uh, Beyond that, uh, before Nate wraps us up for the night, did either of y'all have any any final thoughts you wanted to leave with the audience? Um, tagging on to the, the the pay for your porn, talk about the porn that you watch. Yeah. Like normalize porn the way porn because uh, it, it is normal. I don't know. I look. I know the demographics of the people who call me and buy my stuff. Most of them are in the Bible Belt. Also, shout out to Utah. You guys got, you, you guys bought me my honorary house. Bible Belt member. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mormon Church. Many of your members have bought me my second house. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, talk about porn. That is the most. I actually, I, I, I honestly want to say that that's more going to be more impactful. I don't want to say don't pay for your porn. It's going to help in the long term and more people being okay with paying for their porn and more people being okay fighting to keep porn sites alive because yeah like what are you gonna do what despite what the the many sins of mind geek in the past what are you gonna do when Pornhub's gone what you gonna do um so yeah talk Fair about to say. That. sorry yeah you both kind of took the Hello, words out of box. my mouth <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's, as far as like paying for porn and normalizing porn, my partner of 10 years and I both have people that we follow and pay to see sexy pictures of, and we don't care. It's It doesn't threaten the other that when my partner's not around and I want to fire the cannon or does he, it's, it's, there's no shame around that. And there's no shame around paying the person providing you with that pleasure for, for what they've done for you. The more we can normalize this, the more we can make it healthy, the more these social media outlets will be discouraged from from shadow banning and deplatforming because it's just going to be a part of life. We all like to fuck, so let's just admit it. I love that. Well, okay, we no, like we it. don't. We don't all. I, I forgot my ace <laughs> friends. Not, yeah, not, not friends. everybody, but yeah, broadly speaking, no, broadly. it's fair to say. It's yeah. fair to say. Exactly. No, a hundred, a hundred and ten percent. So yeah, the more that we talk about it, the better it'll be. But absolutely, yay. it's okay, folks. It's all okay. <laughs> it's okay. Just it's all fun. good. <laughs>